Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. Uh, a slightly odd range today. I've got three Rieslings, uh, but they are flanked uh, on one side by a Austrian Gruner Veltliner and on the other side by a Chilean Viognier. They had had these two bottles hanging around for a while and I thought, I need to taste them at some point. Anyway, we'll just kick off with the Gruner Veltliner, which is the Lorenz 5 um, Charming Gruner Veltliner uh, from Camptal. Camptal Reserve, vintage is 2011. Well, this is on the weightier side of Gruner Veltlina. Um, there's still a little bit of that citrusy bite there, that little bit of uh, what I call the lilt flavours, grapefruit, but with the more exotic pineapple. But here, feels like there's a bit more peachy weight. But underneath it all, there's this um, undercurrent of something of the soil, which it smells like it's going to be rich, but this dry, fine, structured uh, beast. Oh, that's really good. Um, yes, it's got the weight. It's got the perfume. Um, perfume is maybe the wrong word. It's got this... Um, stony uh, stony character this aromatic richness but restraint so yes it feels like there's this um, a bedrock there rather than soil it's like you, you can taste there's a rocky edge there and then this more voluptuous a bit of the peach bit of the pineapple and uh, some, sometimes people talk about lentils in uh, in Gruner and you know, I don't get any of any of that character here. But um, one of those classic rich but dry wines bring on the roast chicken, ideally with a shaving of truffles, if you can't have that morel mushrooms. Good. Right uh, now onto the rieslings. So two Australians, but the first one is uh, Prince von Hessen um, Steckenferd. I'm not sure what Steckenferd means, but there's a picture of a rocking horse on the, on the front of it. And it's a 2011, just straight Rheingau Riesling, 11.5% alcohol. Give it a whirl. Now, it's hard to tell from this whether it's going to be dry or sweet. There is something that really has got a lot of that sweet and sour character. Um, so a bit of the oranges, a bit of the cranberries in there. You know those fruit salad chews? There's something of that there. But it, again, as with the first one, it feels like underpinned by uh, something stony and interesting. Well, I'd say just off dry there. Zingy acidity, uh, keeping it all, raining it all in, but then... Uh, this quite large, juicy, zesty fruit, uh, but with this richer, yeah, uh, fruit salad chews, and there's a bang on the nail there with that. A uh, bit of peach juice in there, but this cranberry edge as well, you know, the red bits in the fruit salad chews. And um, yes, it's it's more the fruit that's carrying it at the moment. I've got a feeling that as it, uh, as it calms down over the next few months, a bit more of that soil character will come through, but at the moment it's in, uh, it's in, uh, it's in fine fettle. It's really delicious. Mmm, tasty. Actually, I'm just had a look at the alcohol levels of the, these two, and I'm going to swap them around um, for the. So the first one we're going to do is um, Woolundry Road Riesling from Margaret River, 2011 vintage. Uh, I uh, yeah, there's not all that much Riesling in Margaret River. Lewin Estates always done a good one, uh, but uh, let's see what this one's like. Now this feels like it's going to be a richer style, uh, maybe a touch drier. Um, uh, but um, it, it's got more, slightly more voluptuous fruit here. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's maybe going to have the zing uh, that's, uh, that, that, that was in the, in the, uh, in the Prince von Hessen, uh, but still smells pretty good, clean, uh, precise. Uh, it feels like it's going to be a nice, precise wine. Just what it is. Feels feels quite uh, restrained and uh, as if it's, it's got a bit of like uncurling to do. Uh, the, what the Prince von Hessen felt like it, it, was, it was already showing, uh, here I am, come and get me. Here it feels almost feels like uh, over the next few hours. I think it's going to uncurl and show more of its uh, more of its true metal. Uh, but um, it's a good wine. It really is. It's, it, there's this richness and there's this juiciness about it, um, and uh, it, it's more on that citrus and lime and slight, ever so slight toasty character in, in there too. Um, I, very, I mean, a very different style from the uh, uh, from the Prince von Hessen, but um, maybe not equally good. But uh, I, I, it's still good. Let's see how the next one does. Uh, so we're back in South, well, not back in South Australia. We are in South Australia here. This is Harvey ne Nichols' own label Riesling from the Clare Valley, made for them by Killy Canoon. And uh, so it's a Watervale Riesling 2011. So Watervale is probably Riesling central for, um, uh, for, for the Clare Valley, and some would say for, for the whole of South Australia. Well, I did this second... Um, well, after the wool under the wool under was 12%. This is 12.5%. But here it feels like a more taut, 
um, yeah, more aristocratic, if that makes sense. Uh, it feels like it's got, going to have more of a, uh, a, a, an upright, a slightly stern, uh, Teutonic backbone. But um, the, flu, the flavours around it, there's, there's something of the river pebble. Uh, I, I, get, I get told off every now and You know, when you, you know, I say to people, you know when you're, just sitting, you're sitting there and you, you lick pebbles on the beach and everyone goes, no. You, have you ever licked a river, river pebble? No. Well, I have. And uh, there's something of that stony precision here. But um, more of the lemon and lime flesh there to, um, to make it a bit more curvy, less angular. Yeah, definitely more soil character coming through there. And it's this um, energy, this precise, focused, there's this juicy lime juice and, uh, um, and citrus and maybe a bit of, um, of Granny Smith's apple in there. But it's, it's this stony thing that's, uh, that's weaving its way through that's, uh, that for me is the most interesting aspect there. Really good. Uh, uh, juicy, tight, taut, lean. Uh, I think I said the Wollandra was going to uh, uh, uncurl over the next few hours. I've got a feeling that that will be un uh, uncurling even when the Wollandra Road's uh, done all its uncurling. I like that, and I think I like it slightly more than the Prince von Hessen, but uh, both pretty good. Final wine. Uh, we are in Chile, and uh, so this is the um, Casa Silva uh, Viognier from the Colchagua Valley, a bit here called Lolol. Uh, I have uh, have a love-hate relationship with Viognier. Some, sometimes I, I, I like it a lot, and uh, let's see what this one is like. Sometimes Chile's ones can be uh, either a bit insipid or they can be a bit over the top. Let's see whether they've got the balance right here. Well, it smells like Viognier. If you pick Viognier too early, uh, it go, it's just another white wine. If you pick it too late, it, is, it is really is like a bit of a bloated slapper. Uh, here, they've got managed to keep uh, the peachy aromatic uh, edges in there, uh, and there's some of the nut kernel as well. It smells like it's going to be good, um, uh, but it still smells like it's going to have a little bit of freshness. Pretty good, though. Um, yeah, it's, um, as, as I was expecting from, from the smell, um, it's got enough of the ripe Viognier character to carry it, and it's got enough of the freshness to stop it going wobbly. Um, uh, juicy, round, rich, not too rich, not too bloated, uh, but still carrying this creamy nut, uh, peach kernel character all the way through. Um, I can't remember trying better to chili and Viognier than that. It's... Uh, it's, it's really nice. Um, and actually, they, I think all of these wines were, were, were pretty nice. Uh, uh, and um, so um, my only dilemma now is which of them do I drink tonight? It's easy.